Hi, this is Dr. Carrie Krieger of Save the Frogs. Welcome to Save the Frogs Academy, Save the Frogs A class, where our goal is to promote and coordinate and grow Save the Frogs Day, the largest day of amphibian education on the planet, which will be taking place April 27th, 2013 and hopefully for many years to come on the last Saturday of April. So we're going to be online. Let's see what that is. Hi. I thought I had everyone muted, but apparently not. So I'm not sure what that is. So if you're out there, please mute yourself. <laughs> Let me see if I can fix that. Okay, let's start by introducing ourselves. Choti, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, excellent. Um, hi, I'm Choki. I'm in, I'm in Colorado, USA, and I'm in the middle of a snowstorm. Um, what else did you want to know, Terry? I think, for, first give me a second, let me see where all the sound is coming from. And if I can stop it. Uh, another thing, Choti, I, for some reason, have no ability to mute you. I'm not sure why. So if you're not talking, then um, I, mute yourself. Because is it possible that sound is coming from your end? Do you have a lot of background sound there? Um, no, actually, and I've been muting myself when I'm not actually speaking. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I guess tell us, um, tell us a little about your frog background. Anything you anything you want to say to let people know my, about you? My frog background. Or um, any type I, of anything I grew you want up to in, I grew up in India for the first few years, and then I was in Zambia in Africa until I finished school. So I have a lot of um, animal background, wildlife. I've always liked frogs since I was a little kid. Um, there was no rational reason when I was young. I just liked them. Um, as I got older, by the early 80s, I was aware of an amphibian crisis, specifically with frogs. I'm not really sure why other people are not. I thought it was common knowledge, but maybe not. Um, certainly, by the late 80s, it was very obvious to me that frogs would be gone in my lifetime unless something happened to prevent that. So when I actually, by chance, happened to see Save the Frogs online, originally, originally through Facebook, um, I was, you know, I found out as much as I could about it, and that's how I got involved with Save the Frogs. Um, of course, meeting you, Carrie, was was helpful because it makes it very real, um, and I would like to learn more to be effective in doing something about the demise of amphibians. That's kind of my background. This is my second class, I guess, with Save the Frogs, and I can't wait. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> Thanks, Choti. And we have Neural Islam calling in from Chittagong, Bangladesh. Neural, why don't you give a brief introduction to yourself and your uh, past history with Save the Frogs? Yeah, thanks to all. I am Neural Islam from Chittagong, Bangladesh. I am studying in Faculty of Veterinary Medicine in Chittagong Veterinary Animal Sciences University. Uh, I am. I serve as the volunteer of Save the Frogs, Bangladesh, and um, into. 2012, I'm able to arrange 
I was able to arrange 18, uh, 12 events throughout the country uh, and upcoming 5th annuals of the Frogs Day I have a plan to arrange 5 prime events in our country and I wish to build my career at the wildlife veterinarian especially uh, the amphibian veterinarian thanks all right, thanks, Neural. Samuel in Ghana. Yes. Hello. Hi. My name is Samuel Kofi Enfi. I recently graduated from Ghana Veterinary College, and I am a veterinary technician and a teacher in national service at Peace of Field Agriculture. I am a volunteer of Civil Force Ghana. And I help in creating a new chapter at Investigal Agriculture and Environmental Science. And I am very keen to be part of Civil Defense and help in any of their events. Thank you. Thanks, Samuel. All right, so hopefully everyone could hear that. There's a little bit of static on Samuel's line. Uh, Samuel lives near the Atiwa Hills, which is an area we're working on protecting in Ghana. That's under threat from mountaintop removal mining. And there's a university right in the area where Gilbert Adam recently spoke at and helped um, start a student chapter at the university. And so Samuel's focused on that region of Ghana and helping us get that national park created in the Atiwa Hills to protect the frogs and other wildlife there. All right, and we have Alyssa Carroll on the line. Alyssa, could you uh, introduce yourself, say something brief about your frog background or Save the Frogs, anything you want to say? Hi, Alyssa. Okay, well, if Alyssa returns, then let us know. And I'll just, uh, let's see. Okay, we'll see what happens. Okay, so that's what we have right now for students online. There were a couple others who had registered. Okay, let's see. Alyssa's having mic issues. Uh, I'll leave you unmuted. It sounds like something's coming through when I unmute you. You can try to talk. And also, there may be on your GoToMeeting screen, if you talk into your mic, it should show you. There's a little audio part that'll show you if it's coming through. And there may be a help button up top that has some um, technical troubleshooting things going on there. Uh, otherwise, before the next class, I, I would just attempt to test it out and make sure it works. For now, there's a chat screen down below, so feel free to chat if you have something to say. <clears throat> so, yeah, I was hoping to have more students. I'd like to have 10 students on this call. And I thought that I advertised it pretty well, including a couple emails saying there were scholarships available and therefore that it was free. So I'm not sure if people are busy or if I wasn't clear on what it is or if people just don't really want to dedicate six hours to saving frogs six hours a week. Okay. We have Michael Starkey on the line. So I don't show him showing up on here, and I wonder why that is. Hey, Gary. Can yeah, you I, I can, but Hi. I don't I don't see you on here, which is really weird. Yeah, I, I called in. That's why. Okay. I'm on a, just a cell phone. To the, that's cool. Uh, yeah, but I just want to, uh, you know, thank everyone for taking their time out of their day to join us on our call. We're really looking forward to working with you guys. All right. Thanks. So Michael has been helping me save the frogs for two or three years and it's good to have him on 
So yeah, right now, essentially, there's me and Michael and then the four of you. So we'll have to make up the slack for the six uh, open spots that we were hoping to fill. And again, if, if you know people who would want to join us and who are dedicated and have some time to put in over the next month, then certainly let them know. Regardless, we're going to do these classes and hopefully show the world how much we get done and inspire others to follow us. That's the way it's always been. When I started Save the Frogs, it was just me. And now there's a whole lot more people helping Save the Frogs. So put in the effort and people will follow once they see all the great work you're doing. Okay, so... Basically, as I said, our goal is to promote, coordinate, and grow Save the Frogs Day. This is the fifth annual Save the Frogs Day coming up. My goal is 300 events in 50 countries, which I think is possible because last year we had 200 events in 39 countries. And Save the Frogs tends to grow every year. We hope it continues to. As we get the word out, more people involved, more people who have already uh, held Save the Frogs Day events should be easy to get them holding Save the Frogs Day events again, as well as us reaching out to new organizations, getting more people involved. And now we have the help of you all helping us spread the word about Save the Frogs Day and making things happen. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, basically I'll just give you a rundown on Save the Frogs Day and the Save the Frogs Day web page, which um, most of you have hopefully seen. Uh, one of the most important parts, well, certainly anytime you're contacting anybody about Save the Frogs Day, definitely give them the URL, savethefrogs.com slash day, so that they click through and check it out. If they're an organization and you want them to promote Save the Frogs Day, then this icon right up at the top of the screen, the Save the Frogs Day icon, send it to them. Go ahead and download it to your computer. Send it to them in an email or send them the URL of the image. You can always get any URL of an image by right-clicking on it. Copy the image URL. And then, uh, you know, ask people to put that up on their website. Link to Save the Frogs dot com or to this page so that we get more traffic and more visibility and then when you're telling people about people will say what can I do for Save the Frogs Day there's so many different things that we do on Save the Frogs Day the main goal is to get people in their community raising awareness for amphibians and doing something beneficial to amphibians which usually hopefully also is fun and enjoyable for the organizers and for everybody involved. So one of the best ways to give people ideas is just have them look at these pages right here. Can you all see my mouse cursor when I move it around? Can someone type in yes or no? Okay, good. Yeah, so these pages right here, these links, Save the Frogs Day 2012, 2011, 2010, 2009, those, I find, are the best ways to give people ideas on how to come up with events. So I've done, I hope, a good job. I've put many, many hours in each year into listing events. And so if you're talking to people and they're interested in having an event, let them know, hey, if you hold an event, we'll put it up on the website. People like the free publicity and they like to have their event seen and they feel good about that. And these pages have lots of info on what other people have done in the past. So I find that's the best way to inspire people and to give them ideas on what they can do for their event because they'll be looking through here at all the pictures and the event descriptions and be like, yeah, that sounds like something that I'd be able to do. So if you haven't looked through those pages, pages definitely scan through them and always when you're talking to people who are interested in organizing events make sure you let them know to check out those pages of past years so that they can get ideas 
So this year for Save the Frogs Day, I personally am going to be in Columbia, and we've got about five universities there that hold Save the Frogs Day events. So I'll be down there. It's the first time being out of the country for Save the Frogs Day for myself, and I plan to get a lot going on in Columbia. We have a 5K race in Seattle that Brianna Binder is organizing. So if you know anybody in Washington State, let them know about the 5K, savethefrogs.com slash 5K. Gilbert and Samuel, who's on the phone, will be coordinating events in Ghana to help raise awareness of the various environmental issues in Ghana. And Michael Starkey, who's on the phone, he will most likely be in Ghana helping out Gilbert, but also before he goes, because he's done such a good job getting the word out to uh, frog-loving people of the greater Sacramento, California area. Uh, we're going to be working on getting some Sacramento events going on. So that's essentially what we're doing personally here at Save the Frogs as far as the staff goes. Everything else is up to our volunteers and supporters worldwide. So that's why I like to think of it as a decentralized event. Save the Frogs Day happens all around the world, whether I'm there or our staff is there, just because we inspire people to take action. That's our goal. And now it's your goal, too. Inspire people to take action. Okay, need educational materials for your event. One cool thing we have going on this year is Save the Frogs Day event organizer packages. So we know that people who are holding events will have a more successful event if they have some of the cool educational materials and various items that Save the Frogs has created. And we got a grant from Nature's Path organic food company to promote Save the Frogs Day and including sending out a good number of free organizer packages. And these are for events in the USA, Canada, and Mexico. So only North America. And they're for events that incorporate kids up to the age of 18. So if there's going to be kids at the event, then we can send out packages to organizers. So keep that in mind if you're talking to people. Let them know that you know if they're USA, Canada, or Mexico, we can potentially send them free educational materials, and that will help hopefully uh, not only make the events bigger, but make people decide, hey, yeah, I can hold an event. They're going to send me free materials. All I need to do is get the people there and get something happening. And so... Yeah, this page, it's it's linked through from the main Save the Frogs Day event, but just to let you know, it's savethefrogs.com slash packages, and you can check out the kind of things that we'll be sending out to people based on the size of their event. And within the next week, I'm going to be sending out a newsletter to the Save the Frogs email list all about Save the Frogs Day, and it'll have info on how to apply for these packages. Another thing that I'll also say is... If you are able to convince somebody that they'll have an amazingly awesome time saving the frogs on Save the Frogs Day and therefore they should hold an event and they say, yes, I'll hold an event, be sure to make to let them know and hopefully even follow up with them to register their event. So I put this right at the top of the page and it'll soon be at the top of the main Save the Frogs homepage. Register your 2013 event here, and it's got some reasons why they should do that. And then a registration form. If you plan to hold an event, then make sure you register. And what registration does is it makes us at Save the Frogs able to say, hey, we had 313 events this year instead of, hey, maybe we actually had 500 events, but people didn't register, so we never knew about it, and then Save the Frogs Day sounds smaller than it actually is, and that makes it harder to get grants and donations. So we really want everybody registering so that we know how much goes on, 
that we're able to relay that information to people so that we can keep um, event organizers updated and give them news and um, uh, other various benefits. So always, if you're holding an event or if you get somebody to hold an event, remind them to register their event. And that link's right at the top of the page on Save the Frogs Day page or savethefrogs.com slash register. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, so on the Save the Frogs Day page, we've got lots of specific ideas for various groups of people. <clears throat> teachers, so if you're talking to schools, contacting teachers, and basically, yeah, here's, here's my current idea for what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be kind of just running down this page so that you know my basic thoughts on Save the Frogs Day. And then I have a list of potential actions we can all take or tasks that we can take and on ways to, you know, go about promoting, coordinating, and growing Save the Frogs Day. And then we'll open it up to brainstorming session from all of you to see what you all think. And then we'll try to all choose some tasks that we will work on either for the next month or at a minimum for the next week so that we all have something specific, some goal for the next week on what we're going to do. Okay, so that may entail some of you may be talking to teachers or contacting schools. And because there are so many schools that get involved in Save the Frogs Day and that was one of the reasons that I started Save the Frogs Day was to get schools involved. We have a specific page for teachers. Save the Frogs Day tips for teachers right here. So it has ways that teachers can get their students involved with a general lesson plan how to download some PowerPoint presentations if they want to give a slideshow that day. It says we can send them some info cards, info for art teachers, English and writing teachers, which is basically getting their students to write some poetry for the Save the Frogs Poetry Contest, uh, some info on dissections, how to get dissections out of their school, film teachers, getting teachers to have their students make videos about frogs and some other ways schools can get involved holding a fundraiser and we have a page dedicated to how to help people raise money building frog ponds writing politicians writing letters to the editor of their local paper how to find funding for future save the frogs day events and some info on contacting politicians if students want to write politicians. So that's all on top of we have an actual Teachers for Frogs page on our site right here with lots of general ways teachers can get involved. So lots of ideas for teachers. Shouldn't be any problem for any teacher who's interested to get their students involved. And we also have those free organizer packages since there will definitely be students involved. So, yeah, students also. We've got this list of ideas for students, and we have the Students for Frogs page. So there's lots of ways for students to get involved. If you know scientists, certainly amphibian biologists, then definitely let them know about Save the Frogs Day. And... We, again, have a Scientists for Frogs page in that left sidebar of our website with lots of ideas on how scientists can take part. This poster is out of date. We have new posters that I'll get online any day to help promote Save the Frogs Day. Yeah, so politicians. We have these proclamations that various politicians in the past have um, put forth officially recognizing Save the Frogs Day, and we have a actual dedicated web page 
all about Shade the Frog's Day proclamations. And you can view these past proclamations from which you can grab text if you are interested in writing your politician to get them to recognize Save the Frog's Day. And a lot, most politicians are into it if you give them advance notice. And it's good, uh, it's good publicity for us, and it educates the politician. And uh, it can also be used to raise some awareness among the constituents in that state. Save the Frogs Day in the news. We, uh, let's see, Save the Frogs Day is one of our best ways of getting news, getting journalists to write about frogs, interview us about frogs, uh, get events on TV, or just any kind of publicity, websites, etc. So, if you have media contacts, or if you're interested in learning more about the world of media and how to get news, or if you're into writing press releases, contacting news agencies, then we can definitely get you going on that. And I definitely recommend uh, testing it out a little. If you're holding an event, then try to contact some local journalists and see if they can uh, come to your event or interview you, help maybe even before your event to help get some publicity so that more people show up. It's free advertising. If we get on TV or a newspaper, then that's a good thing. Fundraising, if any of you are specifically interested in learning how to fundraise, then uh, we can get you working on that. Save the, again, Save the Frogs Day is the best way that we have thus far discovered to raise funds for frogs. People are most willing to donate, generally speaking, around Save the Frogs Day because, hey, it's Save the Frogs Day. If you were ever going to donate to the frogs, that would be the time. And as I said before, we have a specific page all about giving people tips on how they can fundraise. SaveTheFrogs.com slash fundraise. Fundraise for the frogs. So this page isn't specifically about Save the Frogs Day, but lots of ideas. People can hold fundraising house parties at their home or in their office, have a bake sale for the frogs. We can even send people free cookie cutters. And if people make cookies, then they can usually sell them and raise some money, especially if it's a Save the Frogs Day event. <clears throat> some other ideas on how people can raise money are on this page. So check that out if you're into fundraising. And definitely if you're holding an event, <clears throat> then it's good to raise some money and maybe even just to offset the costs of your event if there are costs of your event that have not been covered. And that's something else we can discuss. If you guys are holding events, uh, we can potentially help you fund it. All right, so Save the Frogs Day sponsors. We have an actual Save the Frogs Day sponsorship page. Let me see if I... Uh, well, we have a PDF people can check out that's already, it's ready to go. If you know a company, if you work for a company that may be interested in sponsoring Save the Frogs Day, then we can get them up on our website to get them some good publicity. And we have this page, savethefrogs.com slash sponsors, that's got all that information and the things that they will get in return. Currently, we have a few sponsorship levels. I think they're $500, $1,000, and $2,500. And for each of those, the company gets something beneficial from us, which is essentially publicity of different amounts. So if you are into contacting businesses, we maintain a list of potential businesses that we would like to contact because we think they may have some interest in Save the Frogs. So that's a possibility on one way to promote and grow and help out Save the Frogs Day is by 
contacting all these companies and seeing if they can help out. Partners. So basically I consider businesses, for-profit businesses to be potential sponsors, nonprofit organizations, environmental groups. I consider them to be partners or potential partners in that our missions probably match up in some respect and we want them helping out. One of our goals at Save the Frogs, especially since we're a small nonprofit, as far as staff goes for certain, we're small. Some of these nonprofits have lots of people working there and a whole lot more money than us and a whole lot more reach as far as large uh, media contact lists and newsletter email lists, etc. So we want other nonprofit groups getting involved in frog conservation to help us fulfill our mission. So if you know people who work at nonprofits or environmental groups, uh, maybe your former university student group that was dedicated to wildlife, we definitely want to be getting the word out to all those groups, getting them, hopefully holding ev events, but even if they can't hold events themselves, maybe they can just promote Save the Frogs Day by putting our I Save the Frogs Day icon and link up on their website or writing their email list and telling them about Save the Frogs Day or something to that effect. And we can certainly make them an official partner if they want to be an official partner. And so we have a few. I need to update this web page right here. Uh, but again, we maintain a list, a big spreadsheet of potential partners. And we could certainly use somebody whose job it is to just start contacting all these different organizations and say, hey, Save the Frog Day is coming up. Here's a list of, you know, 10 ways you can help out, and here's what we would do for you in return if you helped out. Okay, so that's a run-through of the Save the Frogs Day webpage, savethefrogs.com slash day, which is super easy to find from our homepage. Hey, right there or right here. Just click through, and all of a sudden, you're on the Save the Frogs Day page. Okay, so before we continue to, um, I guess I will give out, if you haven't already figured out some of my ideas, I'll run through my list of things that people can do, and then we'll brainstorm a bit and see what everybody out there thinks, and then we'll work on splitting up some tasks and figuring out who's doing what. But before I continue, I just want to open it up a little bit to some discussion. So uh, let's see. Alyssa, it looks like you're muted. So I'm going to unmute you, and maybe you'll have to actually, you're self-muted. If you unmute yourself, maybe your microphone is working. Hi. All right, well, I hear something coming through now that you're unmuted. It seems like it would work, but I guess not. We do have Alyssa on the line, though. Okay. I've remuted you now. So before I continue with my thoughts, does anyone out there have anything to say? And if you just put in a little chat, I can unmute you. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'll go through my list then that I had in mind of things that we could do. And, of course, some of you may be holding your own Save the Frogs Day events. And... For that, your focus, you know, your number one focus is your Save the Frogs Day event. And all these things I'm about to say, they won't be, you know, 
everything you do, but you can certainly incorporate aspects of them into promoting your own event. So if your plan is to be organizing your own events, great. Let's focus on that, and each week you will update us on how your event organizing is going and how it's going promoting your own event, and we'll all be giving input on how you can make your own event better by using some of these uh, tools and ideas that I'm about to mention. Before I do that, we have a question, chat question from Alyssa, whose mic is not working. Is there a way to get t-shirts in bulk? Yes. So, certainly for event organizers, as I said before, we have the organizer packages, savethefrogs.com slash packages, which is Lots of materials that we find organizers like and that we provide to organizers at cost, so we're not making any money off of it. It's just going for the cost that it takes for us to um, purchase those items. And as I said, for USA, Canada, Mexico this year, we have a certain number of packages that we'll be able to distribute for free, courtesy of Nature's Path EnviroKid Cereal Company. As far as anything else, if anybody, if like Save the Frogs volunteers are out there in the world and they want to get materials from us, then yeah, there's a high chance that we can get you a bulk price. And certainly we just need some advance notice, um, hopefully as soon as possible as you know and we can quote you a price. We're actually working on preparing a little catalog of all our gifts, and that would include bulk prices in there. But until then, just send us an email. And actually, the best person to send the email to is Kathleen, and I'll type her email right there. So just send her your idea on what you're looking to get, and then we'll figure out a good price for you. Okay. Any other questions before I move on? Okay, we got a question. Okay. So, Samuel, I'm not sure what your question is, but Samuel wants to educate students in a high school in the Atiwa Forest area about the benefits of creating this national park, the Atiwa Hills National Park. And, yeah, he wants to make that his Save the Frogs Day event. And I think that's a great idea. And I have not spoken to Gilbert to find out if Gilbert had a any separate plan for Atiwa on Save the Frogs Day. And if you guys plan to do multiple events there, just one event, and I know that Michael Starkey will likely be in Ghana to help out with Save the Frogs Day events then. So I think that's a good idea. And certainly the first thing to do, Samuel, is to contact, uh, run it by Gilbert. And unless he has some other idea for you, then I'm all for it. And I would contact the principal, the headmaster of the school, and let him know what you plan to do. And one thing all of you should bear in mind, Save the Frogs Day is on a Saturday. We made it, it you, we experimented with different days in previous years, but Saturday people have off work and a lot of events would just go on the Saturday because people are free then. For schools though, schools are in Monday to Friday usually. And we're certainly fine if, if you're doing something with a school, you know, if they do it the day before or any time that week, it's fine. So if Saturday works, Samuel, then do it on the Saturday. Otherwise, feel free to do it on a Friday when the students are already in school. And so I'm going to run through my list, and then we'll all come up with, you know, I'll let you all speak and say the things that you have in mind and any particular questions about your own events and how we can help um, promote those. 
Okay, so the first thing that I have in mind is museums, zoos, aquariums, aquaria. They all uh, have pretty wide networks of supporters and are able to get the word out about things like Save the Frogs Day. And there are some museums, zoos, and aquariums that currently hold Save the Frogs Day events, but there's certainly a huge network of all of those organizations that we have never contacted and who may very well be interested in Save the Frogs Day. And our idea for them is, hey, you, you already have an education staff at your museum, zoo, or aquarium. Just come up with an event for Save the Frogs Day and focus on educating your community about amphibians. So uh, we've got a list of some museums, zoos, aquariums, and if anyone out there wants to contact those groups, then we can get you doing that. And Samuel says there's a zoo in Accra, capital of Ghana. So that's good. I, I don't know anything about them. They may have an amphibian program. They may not. And perhaps, Samuel, you know somebody in Accra. If you're, if you're working in Atiwa, it's probably best that you focus on Atiwa. But if you know how to get the, yeah, you know, in, in form... Gilbert, maybe he knows somebody there and can get the word out to them. Neural asked me if we've contacted the ASG Amphibian Specialist Group. <laughs> okay. We've got ideas coming in from everyone. Alyssa knows some local game preserves and sanctuaries. Okay, so everyone, you know, keep a list. I don't know if you're taking notes or what. Hopefully you're taking some kind of notes. But, you know, write these things down and, you know, we'll figure out as the class goes on today and we've got 40 more minutes, 50 more minutes. And as the month goes on, what people should focus on. So if you do know, if you do have contacts at zoos or wherever, then, you know, if you have the time and want to dedicate the time to that, great. If you want to spend your entire next four months contacting all the zoos and aquariums across the world, then that's great, too. So keep it in your head. Choti says, children's sections of libraries. So libraries, yeah, libraries are good sources of knowledge. They've always been very friendly towards Save the Frogs because we do have a big kid focus. I've always thought it was important to get kids involved. Kids tell their teachers, kids tell their parents, and kids are our future Save the Frogs Academy students one day and supporters, volunteers, donors, and frog-friendly citizens as they go through life. So educating kids is very important. So yeah, if you have contacts at libraries or if you find yourself in your local library, then certainly talk. Uh, definitely, you know, always when you're talking to people, when you're out and about, bring up frogs. Bring up Save the Frogs Day. Tell them about what you're doing, why it's important. Give them some ways to get involved. So if they're a library, yeah, they probably have a collection of frog books. They could set up an exhibit on Save the Frogs Day or the week of or the whole month of April, which is kind of an earth month. There's lots of Earth activities in April. Yeah, so let's, uh, <laughs> let me keep going. I, guess, I don't know, I guess keep, yeah, people, if you have suggestions, questions, just keep typing them. Otherwise, as I said, I'm going to go through my list and then we'll have everybody talk about their ideas. We get um, Samuel asks if he can get some videos about tourism to show to the students in Atiwa. And he asks that because Atiwa Hills is a very biodiverse area. If it gets destroyed for logging or for um, 
bauxite mountaintop removal mining, then there's not going to be any tourism there. So by creating a national park and promoting tourism as economic incentive, it's one way to get the people involved. And I don't know much about tourism videos, but uh, that would take some looking around. And maybe that is a good thing if you're having a Save the Frogs Day event, because that is one of the main ways to get the local community to protect the forest, then it would be good to have something about that. And Alyssa has a good idea, which is to contact herpetological societies. Herpetological societies, some of them are professional academic scientific research type societies like the Herpetologist League or the Society for Study of Amphibians and Reptiles, the American Society of Ichthyologists and Herpetologists, and a lot of them are just people interested in amphibians and reptiles, often people who have them as pets. And these groups can definitely they're educated enough about amphibians to hold events, and we should attempt to be contacting them. And this page right here, Relevant Links, on our site hasn't been updated in a long time, but I know that on that page right here, National and International Organizations, Australian Society of Herpetologists, Australian, Australian Herpetological Society, Austrian Herpetological Society, there's lots of them all around the world, and they're all linked from our page. It's possible I have their contacts in a spreadsheet, but they'd be so outdated that I'm not sure if they'd still work. So yeah, here we've got, you know, there's at least 30 different herpetological societies listed on this page, and it would certainly be good to have somebody contacting them all and say, say the Frog Day is coming up, can you hold an event? And for all of this, if somebody's in charge of contacting herpetological societies, or zoos, or museums, aquariums, various environmental groups. What we usually do, and we may already have some pre-written kind of email templates, is to create a letter. I'll check it out. I'll say, yeah, that looks good, or I'll edit it. And then it'll just be a standard letter so that we don't have to write it up every single time we write somebody. We just copy, paste you know, change a few names like Dear Denmark Herpetological Society and then have it all written out about Save the Frogs Day, what we want them to do, etc. So, Alyssa, that's a good idea. And, okay, so that was museums, zoos, and aquariums, herpetological societies, other environmental nonprofits, I definitely, as I said, have a big spreadsheet of potential partners, various environmental groups, nonprofits, uh, community, nature groups, wildlife groups, etc., that all would potentially be interested in helping us out on Save the Frogs Day by focusing on amphibians. Universities, Alyssa says, and I'm not sure precisely what you mean by that. My idea that I have written down here is university environmental groups. Most universities hopefully have a student wildlife related group or, you know, some of them may be focused on climate change or recycling or pollution or who knows what. But most universities should have some group of students who are dedicated to environmental issues. And I definitely like the idea of somebody contacting them. We, at various points, have contacted groups. It's sometimes kind of difficult because their websites are often outdated. They may not be poorly, they may not be organized well to be responding to emails or updating that page. Um, but yeah, certainly in your area, that's how I usually have people start. 
if you're going to be doing anything, then probably radiate outwards from your area. So if you're in Pennsylvania, then you'd be contacting nonprofits in Pennsylvania or universities in Pennsylvania, student groups in Pennsylvania. Unless you have a reason to be going elsewhere in the world, it's good to see stuff happening in your local community. And certainly also, you know, it's not just the student groups, but if there's most university biology departments have somebody there who does something related to amphibians, and they'd be a good professor to contact. Maybe the professor could do something on Save the Frogs Day, or again, as it's a school, they're in session on Friday, the day before or the week of, or be able to send out an email to their students their biology, ecology students. Certainly if you have an event going on and you're seeking volunteers, then that would be a good thing. And then schools under the university level, contacting local schools and letting them know there's plenty of teachers who are into frogs who have never heard of us. And schools have a biology department and they're good places and I'd you know, it can be any level. I generally view high school as the top priority as far as schools because the students are, the, they will be the ones who, they have not yet decided their career, but they will be the ones who will soonest be reaching the workforce. So, you know, within four or five years, they may be into professional careers related to amphibians and the environment in general. So it's good to reach out to local schools. So if somebody's into, you know, kids, students, early education, then that's a great way to start. Sponsors, as I mentioned before, I maintain a list of a lot of companies some of them mega corporations, some of them small. We've got a huge list of companies that have frog in their name. And all these places would be, um, it would be worthwhile to contact them and say, hey, Save the Frog Day is coming up. It'd be great if you could sponsor us by making a cash donation to Save the Frogs. And we can make you an official sponsor of Save the Frogs Day. Put your name on the site put you in our email newsletter, etc., help you get the good publicity that you deserve. Okay, so I mentioned journalists before. One good way to reach out to journalists is by press releases, they're called, which are basically like usually about a page Essentially, it's kind of a pre-written newspaper article that we write announcing the event, and we send it out to journalists and say, hey, can you, you know, put this in your newspaper or magazine or on your website or interview us, etc. So somebody to reach out to journalists, and we actually have a page, I just sent it to you, that lists some of our former press releases, so you can check out what a press release looks like. We maintain a database of journalists from around the world. Our system used to be a lot easier, but the nonprofit that controlled it seems to be kind of disintegrating. So we're working on um, exporting their lists of journalists, and hopefully it'll still be pretty functional as far as getting contact with them. And sending out press releases is how we've gotten a lot of the worldwide publicity that you see on pages like savethefrogs.com slash in the news. You don't have to look at these, but if you're interested, you can. Okay. What about a photo contest, Alyssa says, and that's a good idea, and we do hope to this year start a photo contest. I don't know if it'll be in time for Save the Frogs Day, or at least in the res 
in the sense that you're probably asking me about as far as send in your best picture of frogs, which we will do. But one thing that I want to do this year is have a photo contest for event organizers to make sure that people are taking pictures at their events because a lot of people don't take pictures or they don't take good pictures and pictures are very uh, important to us certainly for Save the Frogs Day events. That's how we get cool pictures like these ones coming out of Bangladesh right there or wherever. We want pictures. They'll sit on the website forever inspiring people, giving people ideas. So we want to uh, come up with some incentive and reminder for event organizers to make sure they get a good picture at their Save Frogs event. So we will have a little contest as far as like, you know, I don't know if it'll be cash or what it'll be, but make some award for whoever sends in the best Save the Frogs Day 2013 event photo. As far as frogs, though, yeah, that's, we, we do hope to get a photo contest going this year. All right, on top of reaching out to journalists, we have a list of about at least 10 different websites and small newspaper magazines that have told us, hey, anytime you have content to send us, we'll publish it, meaning they like content and they don't want to have to write it themselves. So if we write something up, then we can just send it to them and they'll probably publish it on their web page or newspaper. And it may not be a big paper or highly read web page, but you know, if we write something up, we may as well be sending it to these people. So keep that in mind when you do your, you know, whatever types of things you're writing, that we can probably get it out to these groups. I have a list of them. Social media, we have Facebook.com slash Save the Frogs, Twitter.com slash Save the Frogs. We're now on Instagram, too, at Save the Frogs. YouTube.com slash Save the Frogs. And in all these places and in other social media sites that you may use, we can certainly use some promo. And maybe someone out there, someone you know, is just really into spending lots of time on social media. And if they ever want to just take over or take charge of one of these sites and promoting us, you know, several posts a day to get the word out and contacting groups through those social media sites, which often help you narrow your focus of people out there in the world with similar interests as you, then, you know, it's a great way to get the word out. I know that um, some people on this call right now heard about us through social media sites. So they are valuable. They do take some time. But if you want to, you know, promote us through social media or if you know somebody who is really into, say, Twitter and frogs and wants to take over our Twitter account and help grow our base there and get the word out, then that's a good way to get some promo for Save the Frogs and for Save the Frogs Day. Event calendars are online calendars or papers. Newspapers probably have them in their newspaper, but they're certainly online calendars, usually from newspaper websites. And they're just places where a person can log in and type in the date, April 27th, and say what event is happening that day. Hey, Save the Frogs Day Worldwide is going on. Here's a little description. Here's a link. Call to action. And then it's up on that website and some random person who's surfing that website trying to figure out what's going on April 27th will find out about Save the Frogs Day. And we've never had anybody dedicated to just, you know, spending several hours going to Googling event calendars and posting stuff up there, but it would be a good way to get the word out. Videos. We don't have enough videos, that's for certain. And it would be good to get more videos made, and it would be good for event organizers to be thinking about that so that at their event they can make a little video. But even in advance, if any of you have video skills, if you know people who 
are into making videos. Maybe they're a student in the multimedia department at your local university and they're looking for a project to do. We could use some two minute, five minute short videos promoting Save the Frogs Day, promoting Save the Frogs. If anyone <clears throat> is into that, then keep that in mind because it would be great to have more videos up on our YouTube page to help promote Save the Frogs Day. Alyssa asks about bands and musicians. And that's a great idea right there. We have www.savethefrogs.com slash musicians. Musicians for Frogs page has not been updated in a while, but there's some ideas there. And we also have savethefrogs.com slash drums, drumming for the frogs. If anybody out there is into drumming and wants drums at their events, I think drums are a great way to make some noise. And making noise makes people look, and they'll hear about your event. And plus drums sound cool. So <clears throat> read about drumming for the frogs on that page. Musicians in general, yeah, if you know musicians, if you know a band that wants to hold a Save the Frogs Day benefit concert any time during the year, certainly on Save the Frogs Day, then that would definitely be awesome. And I'm planning this Save the Frogs Day to announce that for our Save the Frogs Day 2014. We are going to have a big, a big focus on benefit concerts on Save the Frogs Day so that everybody has a year to contact all the musicians they know and if they're a musician to go ahead and work on setting up some type of Save the Frogs Day event. Bands and musicians have a big reach as far as audience and ability to get the message out. I'm a musician myself and plan to play a Save the Frogs Day benefit concert, Save the Frogs Day 2014. So I think that's a very good idea. Moving on. Individual fundraising. Perhaps you have always been interested in learning more about fundraising, a skill that will help you with any nonprofit work you do or probably any business enterprise you ever do. So, as I said, we have these pages about how to fundraise for the frogs with some ideas. And if anyone's, you know, interested in that, if you have your own event and want to fundraise for it, or if you're just into helping Save the Frogs, do some fundraising, grant writing, peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising, uh, Kickstarter-type fundraising, or helping out another event or maybe one of the events that your fellow Save the Frogs Academy students are holding but need some money for, then I can certainly supervise you and we can come up with some ideas on how to raise some money. Next thing is the proclamations I talked about, getting politicians to officially recognize Save the Frogs Day. And if you want to put some time into doing that, then I can help out, you know, whether that's your mayor or your county board of supervisors or your governor, president of the United States of America or the president of your country, then uh, that's definitely something worthwhile. And what I'd like to do this year the White House now has a petition uh, website where if you get 100,000 signatories within 30 days, then President Obama will make an official response. Now, I don't know what he'll say, but if we got 100,000 signatures asking for President Obama to officially recognize Save the Frogs Day, then I have a feeling he would officially recognize Save the Frogs Day. And that would be pretty cool and hopefully get some good positive publicity for the frogs. 
So I was thinking about starting a whitehouse.gov petition about a month or four weeks or so before Save the Frogs Day and making sure that all of our partners and all of our event organizers and everybody who's got anything to do with Save the Frogs not only signs that petition, but helps to spread that petition through their social networks and at their event, getting people to sign it and seeing what happens. And that'll also be a good warm-up for the International Day of Pesticide Action, which will be October 12th, which we're organizing. And hopefully that event will be much the same structurally as Save the Frogs Day, where in people all around the world interested in pesticides, not even if it's related to frogs, go out into their community and educate their citizens about pesticides. So October 12th, I'll be in Washington, D.C., leading a rally to try to get atrazine banned. And for that, again, we will have a White House petition for certain to get atrazine banned, try to get 100,000 signatures. And that would be definitely with the help of our International Day of Pesticide Action partners, which I hope will be some very large nonprofits. And there are many nonprofits who don't like atrazine. So getting people warmed up on Save the Frogs Day, signing that petition, registering on the White House website, whether or not we're successful, it'll certainly make all future petition drives that much more successful since people will be familiarized and registered with the White House site. Okay, so Neural says, can you please tell let can you please tell me about the petition? Neural, it's on the U.S. government's whitehouse.gov website. You can probably just Google White House petition website, and it would take you there. I don't know if you need to be spending your time on it since you're in Bangladesh. Alyssa, send me a copy of the petition. Yeah, we haven't made it yet, but we have. We do have some, well, we have some Save the Frogs Day petitions. We have atrazine petitions. They're just not on the White House site. We have not set it up yet. It's, as I said, you need 100,000 signatures to get an official response from the president. That's a lot of signatures. We've never gotten that many signatures for anything. But we've never, you know, pushed for it in, by, you know, getting all of our other partners involved. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, if someone is into that, you know, it could be their whole job to be contacting lots of other environmental groups and so using social media and the newspapers and press to get signatures for that. As I said, it's all you only have 30 days from the time you get the petition online. So it's not the kind of thing we can just start and let it sit around for a while. It's got to be a really well thought out campaign. All right, uh, I'm going to move on. We're kind of running out of time. Flyer creation and distribution. I don't know if we'll need to talk about that. Um, the other thing that <clears throat> we want to get done is Google Doodles. Google Doodles are when Google has some cool little drawing on their logo on a certain day and it sits up on their website for that day and hopefully even with a link and then people click through and we already have a little pre-drawn up Google Doodle that we made with uh, our famous southern orange-eyed tree frog sitting there with his eyes on the O's of the Google and we need to get that to Google and it's not easy getting through the Google bureaucracy they don't even provide email addresses or information on how to submit a Google Doodle to them. So that perhaps requires somebody just to figure out how to get through the Google wall. Okay, so those are my ideas. I'm going to open it up. So we've only got 21 minutes to go. And it's certainly my hope that by the end of this class, everybody has a clear view on what they're doing, at least for the next seven days until we meet. And what I want to do is that everybody goes out, 
You're supposed to spend six hours per week working on Save the Frogs Day related issues. And so we've already spent an hour and a half here. So you basically spend four and a half hours this week. Or, you know, you're welcome to spend more for certain. But at least four and a half hours since we've already done an hour and a half in this class to get your six hours a week. And then we'll meet up same time next week. And everybody will say what they did. And everybody will provide them input on how they did, what they could do next. And everybody will say what they're planning. We'll figure out next steps for everybody get everybody providing input to everybody else, not just me. And, um, okay, so let's, uh, does someone want to start by saying either other ideas that came to their head or specific actions that they plan to take this coming week? So we have four of you. We've basically got five minutes per person. Does someone want to start? Otherwise, I'll just choose somebody. Okay, well, let's start with Alyssa. Alyssa, I don't think your microphone works. I've unmute you, unmuted you if you want to attempt to talk. Otherwise, maybe we'll save you for last, but you can just kind of start typing and put in any ideas either for people in general or just on certain things that you want to do this week to promote Save the Frogs Day. So I'll let you start typing. And in the meanwhile, I'll turn it over to Choti. <laughs> hi, Choti. Okay, um, I'm going to... Hi. Hi, hi. hi. I'm going to put you at my local line at my local library um, about an event on Save the Frogs Day, if it would be possible for me to have some space so that people who come there on the Saturday um, would be able to get information. Ideally, there'd be photographs to attract people, posters. Um, I would get a package from you for an organizer package. Okay. So I'm going to try the library. I'm also, I do have a friend who works for a, it's more a music-based newspaper, but I'm going to see if I can get some um, advertising in there, like with a with a write-up. Um, I think you said you had templates for press release kind of thing. Yeah, we so, we uh, we need to update them a bit, but yes. So I think I'll spend the, this week just trying to get. Um, people interested in setting this up so that I can do it. Um, I think ways to fundraise at the event itself are not that difficult. Um, one could have like a little the, the drawing artists competition. One could have a bake sale. There are several ways to actually fundraise there, but things like the bulk t-shirts would be very valuable, I think, for a small local event okay well. all right that sounds good one thing I guess the first thing that comes to my head as far as fundraising is that the library may not allow it just because it's a library and sometimes they have strict rules on that and that's not necessarily the case I've I've given presentations in libraries and they let me sell stuff but it's definitely something you'd want to bring up with them right away just to make sure it's clear and you know even if you can't sell stuff you know it's still still fine to hold an event that's purely educational. Okay. I'll check about the fundraising aspect. Thank you. Okay. And it's also good to have, anytime you ever have an event or an info table, it's good to have assistance. So if you can find a volunteer, that would be good. I have an almost 15-year-old child. Okay. I think that serves as an unpaid volunteer fine. Good. <laughs> okay. So that sounds good. And the other thing I forgot to tell, can you mute yourself when you're not talking, Shoti, because I'm getting some feedback. Thanks. The other thing I forgot to tell you is that we do have funds included in your scholarship to get you 
all a little bit of time with Allison Lee, our volunteer graphic designer. And she can help you make a flyer or if you need some type of web graphics for your event, then she can help you do that. So we'll do that, you know, in a couple of weeks when everyone's clear on what they would want to do. So keep that in mind. If you want to make an A4 or 8.5 by 11 flyer for your event or some type of web graphics that we do have a professional graphic designer set to uh, help you out and do that. Okay, so I guess the other things to think about, Choti, like get your, you know, first is get permission from the library. Think about what the best library to have it at would be. And then after that, it would be trying to get the library to promote the event. A lot of times libraries promote events many, many months in advance because for whatever reason, paper newsletters. But you'd want them to try to, you know, get the word out a bit and then um, so be thinking about ways to promote the event so that it's not only random people who show up on the day of, which is still fine. If it's a crowded library, you know, maybe there's just traffic there and it does, you don't even need to promote it in advance. But keep that in mind. Okay, so let's move on and let's hear from <clears throat> Samuel. So Samuel, try, I think, Try to speak loudly because there is static in the background when you talk. And Samuel just wrote to say that he does want to make some posters, educate students about frogs. So for that, anytime you're making a poster, just remember the graphic designer does not come up with the content of the poster. If you have text, then that's the kind of thing you need to think really hard about. What's the best way to get the point across in usually the least amount of words. So I'm going to unmute you, Samuel, and why don't you just tell us your thoughts. I, I know you want to organize an event in the Atiwa area, so why don't you tell us what's on your mind. And you are unmuted. Hi. Uh, okay. Hi. Can you speak louder? organize an event in Atiwa to create an awareness of the entire community and also to meet with the district chief executive of the community so that I will discuss with him the, uh, the plans of Save the Frogs, our, our activity to create the Atiwa National, National Park. Then I will also want to meet with the entire community and discuss with them the benefits that they will get from getting the national plan being created. And also, I just spoke with uh, the assemblyman and some chiefs of the community last week, and I gave them some distress with uh, Mr. Mr. Gilbert gave me the other time. I gave the chief some distress and then he was interested, so he made it that I should invite Mr. Gilbert and then he will come over then there will be a community presentation. So this week I will be doing that with Mr. Gilbert. Then we organize everything and then make it possible this Friday, this coming Friday. And also this week I will be going to the University of the Faculty of Environmental Science. That's the new prepared chapter. I will be going there to have a meeting with them concerning their progress. And also to help them to come up with some activities during the Save the Frogs day. Okay. Um, so I, it's, it's hard for me to hear, but let me, um, I think what you said, there's an event at the local high school, and then it sounded like you were talking to assemblyman, the local chief, politicians in the area. And then there is the UCAES University environmental students that you want to talk to. And so how many on Save the Frogs Day do you envision it as one 
total event in the area at the high school, or do you want the UCAES students to also be holding different events somewhere, maybe at their university or maybe in the community? Like, h how many total events do you envision? Uh, okay. Firstly, I want, like, my main aim is to meet with uh, the senior high school students. Okay. But since the UCA is, uh, is a new critical chapter, I also see, like, I want to see, if, like, I want to see if Mr. Gilbert, if we can help them to come up with their own ideas on how to make an event during the civil holiday. Okay, good. Yeah, so that sounds good because the university students, you already have a chapter there, and yes. they're, they're educated about environmental issues. So it sounds like, you know, I'm not sure how many schools there are in the community, but it sounds like maybe you could all, on Save the Frogs Day, or maybe on the day before Save the Frogs Day, because it's a Friday and the schools are in session, maybe the university students who are interested you can all break up into groups of maybe three people and go to several different schools. Yes. So, you know, it, yeah, I, I went to one town around there, but I know that the Atiwa Hills are surrounded by communities. So, yeah, go talk. Maybe this week you can get permission from the high school that you have in mind, and you can also go talk to the UCAES Save the Frogs chapter, president, and students, and find out, you know, who, who wants to actually go into schools on Save the Frogs Day. The other possible thing is, even aside from the schools, is perhaps you could have an event, a public event, in one of the towns, like in one of the main squares. And, you know, this comes down to how many people can, are there to help out. So for now, I'd be focused on finding out how many, you know, how many students can actually help out. And from that, you can figure out what precisely you are able to do. Because you only have so many people. You can only do so much. Okay, so let's, let's move on. And again, or not even again, I, I didn't tell you. Let me mute you, Samuel. Thanks for that. Um, I'm going to be meeting with you each this week. So we'll all figure out a time that we individually meet. We'll talk either on the phone or on Skype. Uh, I can't remember if it's for 20 or 30 minutes that I have dedicated to giving you all personal supervision. But we'll talk each week privately so that we can kind of nail down the finer aspects of what's going on like Choti was saying she wants to send out a letter so we'll make sure that that letter is looking good and things like that and so I'll be emailing you all info on um, you know how to set up a time with me we need to figure out what the easiest way to do that is so I'll be talking to you Samuel sometime this week and we now have neural so give us a few minutes and uh Neural, as we heard, is working on setting up five major events in Bangladesh across the country. And I think, Neural, why don't you tell us, maybe maybe focus on what are you going to do this week to help promote those events. And you are live, Neural. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it just cited that I am going to arrange the five major events in the country and in this week basically I will focus on developing a general brochure or uh, a four size brochure uh, which will contain the uh, basic description of amphibians in Bangladesh and set the frogs, the ground of set the frogs and set the frogs day. It will be a general brochure that means I will distribute it among all of the participants of at the Frogs Day event around the country and later I will uh, distribute it to five event organizers in around the country. Okay. Uh, and uh, This is the first thing and uh, 
number two, I I have a contact uh, with uh, three event organizer in Silet, which are located in Silet, Dhaka, and I am in Chittagong. We have a meeting, a phone call meeting, uh, after three days later, we have a phone call meeting about uh, the planning and the develop, uh, planning and the advancement of the event organization meetings. Yeah, that's all. Okay. All right, thanks, Neural. Okay, so Neural is going to be working on an educational brochure that I'll discuss with him later on the details of how long it's going to be, things like that, and meeting with other event organizers because he's coordinating the five events, so they're in different cities across the country. Okay, and Alyssa, who has no microphone abilities, this week says oh also you know what Alyssa I should have told you this uh, like Michael was on the phone before he was not logged into the webinar but I think in the email that I sent out it had an actual call in phone number so certainly yeah all you have to do and you can even do it right now if you want to is dial this number right here, which was in the email that I sent you. Sorry, I, I didn't even think about that. Um, so if you want to call in, you can call in. Otherwise, I'll read what you wrote. Alyssa's planning on contacting a number of teachers that she knows in the State College, Pennsylvania area, which is where Penn State University is. And she'll talk with professors at Lehigh, Penn State Lehigh Valley campus, where she was a Lion Ambassador and knows a lot of student organizations, and talk to professors at Eastern Carolina University, and people she knows in Florida, South Carolina, and Delaware, talk to local music shops about putting up flyers in their stores, and talking to local bands. The Nittany Valley Symphony meets once a month, and she'll talk to them about having a concert for the frogs. Tussie Mountain Ski Resorts holds concerts and wing fests in the summer. I don't know what that means. Maybe buffalo chicken wings. I don't know exactly what that is. And she'll talk to their public relations person. She has a friend who works at a local radio station and could possibly get some airtime to make an announcement. On that note, I'll say a lot of radio stations or maybe even all radio stations are required by the FCC to provide free public service announcements for nonprofit organizations. So I'd suggest letting them know that, hey, we'd love to get some free PSA, public service announcement time, and that may just entail sending them a pre-recorded 30-second statement of you talking about Save the Frogs Day. Or sometimes you just write up a 75-word what you want them to say, and they'll record it. They'll say it, record it, play it. And also, if you know her, you know, get on, see if she can interview you for five minutes or ten minutes and talk about frogs and save the frogs day and how people can help. Maybe you'll get on the air. And contacting state parks to hold an event there, that would be good brainstorming other event ideas for the purpose of raising awareness and funds. So that's a whole lot of ideas. So I like that. Oh, there's more. There's more. Hold a talk at a local conservancy. Uh, so that's good. So that's talking to them now about getting them involved for Save the Frogs Day. And the listeners, two people who write for the local paper, so asking them to include mention of Save the Frogs Day, contacting the Game Preserve and Pool Wildlife Sanctuary. They have lots of frogs on their ground, so it would be a great place to hold an event or do an environmental program. Scavenger hunt for the kids, for adults. Um, so, yeah, that's a ton of, oh, there's more, there's more. So Alyssa's packed full of ideas, which is great. And Alyssa, your main task may be to Weed down your ideas because it's a lot of ideas. So come up with the most important ones. 
music events. It may, it may be too late just because music events usually take some time to get set up. Not necessarily, um, but certainly symphonies, things like that. They may book their date six months in advance. So a lot of the music-related stuff may be better for 2014. But, you know, if, if you can make something happen, then great. Alyssa says she's developing the local education program for teachers to use. And she's interested in giving a presentation. I'm not sure I mentioned this before, but savethefrogs.com slash slideshows, which is accessible from our teachers page. There's downloadable slideshows that we've created that teachers can use or you can use if any of you want to give a PowerPoint presentation on Save the Frogs Day. Another thing, if you go to savethefrogs.com slash audio, which is in our left sidebar, the audio page, it's got lots of interviews and some presentations that I've given in the past. You can listen to them if you've never listened to them. Just to, you know, the more you know about frogs, the better you are giving a presentation. And Alyssa says, talking to Herp Societies, asking them to hold events start a local committee to help coordinate events in the area. Yeah, that would be good. If you have a ton of ideas, then the more ideas you have, the more volunteers you need. So if you can find local people, then that would be good. I know that Penn State has a well-known amphibian professor, and I can't remember his name right now, though one of his students, I just typed in his student's name. He may still be there. You could probably put that with the word frogs, put it into Google, be able to get in touch with him. And maybe some of those Penn State biology people could help out on Save the Frogs Day events or hold an event on campus. Okay. All right, so that's a ton of stuff from you, Alyssa. And I'd suggest go all the stuff you just typed in, copy it, and paste it into a document. And hopefully all of you can keep, I suggest keeping a some type of Microsoft Word or Google Docs document with all of your ideas and your progress and all your stuff well organized into one place. So go copy all that and you've got a huge list of ideas, Alyssa. Okay, so we're out of time. Um, thank you all very much for your time and for getting involved. Keep your brains uh, brainstorming all the time. Keep talking to people, getting lots of people involved, finding volunteers to help you out, etc. And it sounds like everyone's going to have a lot to tell us about next week. So the goal next week, what I envision is we get online and I'll update you with any random Save the Frogs Day updates and then we'll leave it to you. So everybody try to make sure their microphones work. Alyssa, if you need to, you can call in. Samuel, if you can find a better headset or computer, it would be good because it was pretty difficult to hear you based on there was a lot of static in the background and your voice wasn't that loud. And yeah, if, if anyone wants to, you're, you're welcome to write up a little summary not required but if you want to put anything in paper you know a paragraph or two here's what I did over the course of the week here's what I plan to do next week you're welcome to and you know I, I don't know maybe that's a good idea you don't have to but if people did that we could send them around everyone could take five minutes to read it beforehand and know what everyone else is doing and as I said last week this Save the Frogs Academy it's all brand new it's experimental it's a work in progress whatever we think is going to work best. We can adapt and change things. So if people like that idea, you know, go ahead and write something up. Put it in paper. And if you do that, I'll certainly send it around to everybody. I'll also try to get you all a list of the other students' email addresses so that everyone has everyone's email address and can communicate. And I'll be sending out shortly something about um, finding a time that we can talk on Skype for everyone out there. Skype, if you don't have it, go download it. It's very useful, not just for webcam stuff, but for sharing screens so that I can look at your screen. You can look at my screen. We can talk for free anywhere in the world. My Skype ID is right there. 
I just typed it in. Okay, so I think that concludes our session. Thank you very much. If anybody has anything they want to talk about right now for a couple minutes, then go ahead and um, say something. But I think this concludes the first Save the Frogs Day class of Save the Frogs Academy. And I think it has been beneficial. So have a great week. Thanks. All right, I'm signing off, so I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.